Uh, sup, this is episode 61, which means that we're halfway to the uh, 122 mark, which is exciting. Um, talking about the Illini yesterday and the day before that and the day before that because they played three games in a row from Friday to the other days. And uh, That's right. this is a good comment. Big Ten champs, not just tournament champs, Let's really go. Big Ten champs. I think if we, if Michigan fans and Illinois fans made a deal, which will never happen, obviously, but <laughs> if they made a deal where it was going to be, you know, whoever wins the Big Ten tournament can have the regular season title as well. I mean, I don't hate yeah. the deal. I don't hate the deal. Yeah. Be a pretty good deal. Um, I think Illinois proved that they're the best team in the Big Ten. So, uh, <laughs> That was, you know, this camera's so far away. It's just yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, go Illini Nation. Sorry if the <clears throat> sounds a little scuffed or whatever. I am actually in Las Vegas right now, celebrating my ver- birthday along with Illinois being Big Ten champs. So uh, got to watch the game on a 143 foot screen yesterday. So that was pretty cool. But, Did was <laughs> anyone there rooting for Ohio State? No, there. I don't even think anybody there cared about sports. It was more like a, a club atmosphere than, than an actual sports atmosphere. Do they weird. not know that Vegas is <laughs> where gambling for sports is really? Yeah. You know what we didn't know when we came is that it's actually spring break for a lot of colleges. So uh, not great. Not so great. The crowds are only younger than we thought, but uh, it was still an awesome experience. Um, and and the way Illinois, you know. Should that game went into overtime? Probably not. Um, not really a fan of Brad Underwood uh, not setting up a play with 23 seconds left. Um, I understand Io's the best closer in the game, um, but a uh, 25-foot fadeaway three is really not how you want to try to win a game. Um, I feel like you should have gone to the rim. Uh, yeah, I, the, the, you got to get to the basket. Um, I do like getting a shot up and maybe getting Kofi a rebound. I think that was – probably part of the game plan, but I'd rather Io take that, you know, 15 foot jumper that he, that he makes so often than, than that fadeaway three that he tried to take. Um, and I, and I loved in overtime that he got the ball to DeMonte, I believe. Um, and DeMonte was actually the one that, that sealed, sealed the game. Um, also free throw shooting sealed the game. Uh, Illinois actually shot 25%. Or seventy five percent from the free throw line in this game, so which is a bit, a little bit surprising. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, Kofi was six of thirteen, so uh, everybody else really shot from the free throw line well, uh, especially Georgie. I thought Georgie was huge. Um, if we can get this Georgie um, that came in when Kofi had, I think he had four fouls or three fouls, because um, Underwood was pretty. Underwood hold, held on to Kofi thinking – it seemed like thinking Illinois was going to go into overtime, which I thought was a weird plan because I don't think Kofi played the last six minutes of, the, of regulation. Um, but but Georgie came in and scored nine in a row. Um, it was very good on the, on the rebounding end of the game. He had six rebounds, I believe. Um, but Illinois, I mean, overall they had – Six guys scoring double digits. Um, more balanced Illinois team now than they have been in the past, which I think, you know, those games off when Io wasn't around um, really helped that. So, uh, but Big Ten champs, man, I love it. I Are you worried about the fact that they've uh, won a little bit too much going into the tournament? Nope. The 14th. It's not a worry. I know, I know you don't like hot teams, but – um, you look at, you know, teams that they might play, you know, they're playing the AC, the ACC champs get, get matched up in as a nine seed against them. Uh, the, I don't know what loyal is in. They're playing another championship team. Like, like what are the odds that a one seed plays two teams that actually won their conference tournament? That's very low because you look at the other eight nines you have Gonzaga will play Oklahoma and Missouri. Both those teams are a joke right now. They, they're playing horribly. Um, yeah. And you'll have North Carolina or Wisconsin for Baylor, and North, North Carolina has been pretty good lately. North Carolina, and yeah. Wisconsin's not good. Um, <laughs> and then the other one is who else? LSU, St. Bonaventure. So St. Bonaventure did win the A-10. So yeah. Michigan. And LSU, LSU, LSU almost won. Too, so, yeah. um, 
I mean, the, the tournament seems really tough this year. Uh, Illinois over, has the bracket of underseeded teams. Like, I Georgia Tech's so. underseeded, Loyola Chicago's underseeded, Oklahoma State, what a joke. I mean, how much yeah. is the committee rooting for a Sweet 16, Io and Kate Cunningham? That's what they want. <laughs> right. Right. Which is probably going to happen, honestly. I mean, and then that's Underwood against Oklahoma State. Mike Boynton, who is an assistant under Underwood. Yeah. So. It's, it's funny how they set those up, isn't it? A little weird. I'm surprised they didn't throw Duke in there, too. Um, yeah. But anyway, I mean, you know, got to move on to the next, which is Drexel. They'll play Drexel on Friday at 1215 Central. That is from the Farmers Coliseum, I believe, is where they're playing. Um, and Kevin Harlan is on the call, I'm pretty sure with uh, Dan Bonner. So that's a pretty good draw. You know, you get Kevin Harlan's a very good broadcaster. I think one of the best overall versatile broadcasters because he does Monday Night Football on the radio. He's very good at that. But I think it's the mm-hmm. Farmers Coliseum, right? I'm not even sure. I don't, I don't know how, how you can see that. Don't you got well, a big old book of stuff? I had a link yesterday that led to the <laughs> – thing i'm gonna find it now but by the way big 10 news archie miller not surprisingly out in indiana so that's done i mean not not a shock he was terrible there you look at his overall numbers uh 67 and 56 33 and 43 in the big 10 and zero ncaa tournament appearances now would they have made it last year i don't even remember i think they would have i believe i can't remember the record and there's no reason they shouldn't have made it this year with that roster no yeah, reason. exactly. No reason that a team like Maryland should have been better than them. Right. Yeah. But, so, or, or uh, the Big Ten got what? 11 or oh, what, nine teams in? No. Nine. Big Ten got nine. Big 12 got seven. ACC got seven, which is just insane to me. But, um, yeah. The that Big East crazy. got – how many of the Big East got? You got UConn, Creighton, Villanova, and Georgetown. I think there was four. Yeah. Georgetown screwed the Big East. Big East probably <laughs> could have gotten more if uh, Georgetown would have lost to St. John's or Seton Hall. But anyway, uh, Illinois plays at Indiana Farm Policy at twelve fifteen on TBS um, with Kevin Harlan on the call. So yeah, and then the game that follows them, yeah, the game that follows them from the Farmers Coliseum is uh, Liberty Oklahoma State, and then Winthrop Villanova. So there's three games there that day. Um, so good luck to Kevin Harlan. They're calling three games in one day. So good luck. Um, anyway, so that means that Illinois is going to play Friday. And if they win, I don't think they're going to lose, but if they win, uh, they'll play Sunday. So Sunday against Loyola, Saturday, Chicago, or Georgia Tech. Um, which is just a brutal second round draw. But you know what? You yeah. got to beat the best to be the best, you know? And then, and then you probably play Oklahoma State or Tennessee. Um, then you got yeah, West Virginia. Funny. You got Houston. I, I mean, San Diego State, Syracuse. The, this bracket's tough. Um, the good but, thing about this bracket is there's only a three or four teams that are really, really, really good defensive teams. Houston's yeah. that. I would say Georgia Tech and Loyal are that. The rest, questionable. Yeah. Tennessee um, should be that, but they really haven't been. But you just yeah. you got to play well. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a pretty hard bracket, but I still think that the bracket for uh, Michigan's a little bit harder upon looking at them. But Yeah, I agree. And that's how it should be, right? I mean, it's supposed to be, yeah. Gonzaga should have had the easiest bracket. Baylor, I mean, their bracket's not easy. Um, Michigan's isn't. Overly easy in Illinois. I mean, it's a tournament. It's go time. Uh, put up or shut up, like they say. So, maybe um, Oregon about State. Michigan State being a playing game. Uh, well, it's not a playing game. Sorry, uh, I hear that you're not supposed to say that. Yeah, first four. <laughs> first um, four. I I'm surprised Syracuse isn't in the first four. I really yeah. Um, yeah. But I love that the committee's giving us an actual really really good playing game. First four. Sure. Sorry, excuse sure. me. Um, Michigan State UCLA is a hell of a game, and Wichita yeah. State Drake is pretty good too. I thought uh, everybody thought Wichita State was dead for not winning. I guess because they made it to the championship game, they were all right. I think what helps them is that they won that conference in the regular season, and they beat yeah. Houston. So they have that big time win, and they have the fact of the regular season title in a conference where there's a two seed. So that sure. helps them, but. Um, 
They gave us good playing games. I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, the 16 seed playing games, not too bad. Yeah. I can't even remember what they are, but uh, Norfolk State wait. and I can't even tell what that says up there. Um, <laughs> this Texas uh, Appalachian State, Mount Saint Mary's, Texas Southern, Texas Southern. Your boys, I like Texas Southern in that game a lot. <laughs> yeah. Even though I like Mount Saint Mary's, those are two teams that we picked to win the conference and actually got right. But uh, yeah, so let so, me see that the Michigan is, State UCLA games at eight fifty seven. Uh-huh. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, who plays it? I saw a stat where it was like someone at Mackey is like terrible. Oh, Wisconsin. Really? Wisconsin's like four and forty three at Mackey Arena. I know <laughs> that they were playing Purdue when they were there, but that's okay. when they play against North Carolina. Huh. Oh really? Okay. One thing I and we'll talk about this on the next show, which is the countdown of March Madness show. One thing I hate about this bracket is that there's like three upset picks that everybody's going to take and I don't know where to go because I don't want to pick what everyone else is picking it's very confusing because I don't think I, I wanted to pick Liberty as an upset but I don't think they're going to beat Oklahoma State and yeah. Oregon State has no chance against Tennessee I think uh, we'll see True. True. and as um, much as I talk about Colorado being overrated I don't think they're going to lose the Georgia <laughs> one, so yeah I, I can't believe you're not picking that but anyways, uh, back to the ten, Big Ten tournament real quick. Um, who is your Illini MVP for the tournament? Uh, I mean, I don't know how you don't go with Curbelo or Kofi, right? Yeah. I, I I would say Curbelo. I, I think Curbelo's been a big part of what – or was a big part of why they won this. Um, you know, you, you looked at the, the last few minutes of the game. I mean, it was – Curbelo and the rest, of the rest of the starters. Um, Demonte, of course, was in there too, but uh, Adam Miller didn't play. Um, I feel like it's been like that for a couple months, where he's not playing in close games late. Uh, yeah, I mean, Adam Miller had fifteen they trust, minutes. They trust Demonte and Curbelo more. Yeah, I agree, and I think in I know Miller's defense is good, but he. I mean, he there wasn't somebody that he could guard on Ohio State that, what you know, I mean, they couldn't put him against suing. Um, I I think the biggest move was finally putting Io on uh, the guy that I can't ever remember, which is Sloan Washington. Um, yeah, um, I I think that was the biggest play of the game. Um, was when they made that switch. I mean, Washington had thirty two points. He was. He was he he's a great ball player. Yeah, him and Suing uh, really carried this team. I would put Liddell Dwayne Washington not so great. I would put Dwayne Washington up against almost anybody in the Big Ten when it comes to shooting. Yeah, he I agree. Do it from every angle, he can do it off the dribble, catch and shoot. He does everything. And I would accidentally nail him in the eye there, which you know you, you yeah. can't call that. It wasn't really. I'm anything. glad they did it. Um, Liddell going zero for seven from three too. Um, yeah, we he had a lot of good looks. About how, how all he does is hit threes against Illinois. That's the only team he can hit him against. But only got lucky. If a couple of those would have went down, Illinois didn't win this game. So yeah, Kofi did. Uh, you know, drop back <laughs> on a couple of those, give him pretty good space. Yeah, and yep. uh, he just didn't make them. So yep. I know a lot of a lot of Ohio State fans were blaming Liddell for why they lost, which I don't really think is fair. Oh, I think geez. he's a big reason as to why they lost, but you can't blame it yeah. on one player. I mean, you guys have off games. You know, what do you do? He, he, if if it was that situation um, and, and he didn't take that shot the you know last couple times Illinois played Ohio State, Ohio State wouldn't have had a chance to win. Um, and if he hits – like he had two wide-open looks, and if he would have made either one of them, I think it would have put Illinois away. So, who was Trent guarding when they switched? I think he went over to Walker. Tucker Bello was guarding Walker. Oh, who's number? Who's uh, number two for them? Musa Jallo. Uh, maybe he was on Jallo. Was Arns in? I thought Arns might have been in late. Which after. Remember. After making everything in Illinois, he was very quiet the next two games. I know he had two quick fouls, but I mean, when this when that game started out twenty six to nine, I thought Illinois was going to run him out of the gym. Oh yeah, Illinois was up seventeen. I thought there was no way that you know it'd get close, but 
Big Ten championship, you know, game of runs. I think uh, Ohio State ended on like a 14-4 run in the half and then had a big run in the second half. But, yeah, when DeMonta hit three in a row, I was like, oh, man. This yeah. Might be, this might be yeah, done. My, I want to guard, guard that guy when he's on the wing right there. You think he likes that spot? Yeah. I think that's the only place he can hit a three from. <laughs> it might be. It might be. He also had a big, baseline big, one big floater in the lane, too. That, yeah, that oh, floater, yeah. that pass from Io, um to get it. He made, I think he made a couple floaters, didn't he? Um, and then Curbelo hit that, hit the dagger, I believe. How about how the refs screwed up the flow of the game as is tradition? Yeah. My God. Yeah. I mean, I that the play my favorite play from the Big Ten Championship game was when Curbelo airballed it and then it got out. DeMonte saved it. Miller shot it. Georgie got the rebound after shoving Key out of the way. No call for <laughs> you. And then gets an one. Yeah. Best play. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Georgie that, had a that, great game. That run that Georgie had was huge. Um because that's when Ohio State was really starting to go. And Illinois had nothing offensively. Uh, Georgie got two. I think he got two offensive rebounds during that stretch. And like I said, he he made all his free throws, scored nine or ten in a row. Uh, yeah, Georgie Georgie was that was the difference maker in that game for Illinois pulling that off. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the Iowa game. Do you remember anything from that game? That stand out. Um. Not really. <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's been a was, long. It's been a long forty-eight hours. That game was kind of like similar to the first one, but Illinois held on to the lead for the entire game. Yeah, yeah. And they I won mean, by twelve instead of five, but you know. yeah, Illinois looked really good that game. Um, the I, they there was not a point where I was really worried. I guess um, you know they got within five or whatever, but. Uh, and then Illinois went on a little run. It was it never seemed like it was in jeopardy. And Kofi just dominated the Big Ten Player of the Year. So that's yeah. what I remember. Exactly. Um, and I think the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten has pulled off the greatest uniform matchup in the history of the Big Ten Tournament Championship. It's pretty damn good. Script on script. I mean, it doesn't get better. Yeah, than that. that's what I saw some. One the Iowa script on script, but they didn't. I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing, right? Script, scripts, give me one scripts. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's uh, you know, the Buckeyes ones are pretty sweet. So you know, yeah, I don't know. You yeah. can't, you know, say that that's not the best of all time. But uh, real quick, before we get out of here <clears throat> for this yeah. one, uh, Drexel. Let's look at them since I guess yeah, look at one after this game. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Project what conference is Drexel in? They're in the Colonial Athletic. They beat Elon. They were the six seed in the Colonial Athletic. They beat eight seeded Elon. The projected Ken Baum score for this game is 82 62. Uh, they're 95th in offense and 247th in defense, and they play a lot of half court offense. So, and their biggest player that actually plays is 6'8, 242. So it's kind of like Ohio State in terms of they have a six seven guy, they have a six eight guy, they have a six six guy, five eleven six two. So it's literally Ohio State. I mean, five eleven is pretty much what Walker is. Six two is pretty much what uh, Washington is, except I think he's like six three or six four. Six six is what Suing is. You got six eight Young and six nine Liddell. If that's like, you know, if that was their normal lineup, so yeah, similar size, but they don't have anybody. I mean, they got a guy that's 6'10", 230, but he doesn't play that much. So. Who's that? What's his name? Tim Perry. Tim Perry. 19.5% okay. minutes. So he played seven minutes the last game. Yeah. Uh, 90 uh, – or Cameron Winter is their big player. Guard. He's probably going to be guarded by Miller. 6'2", 175, 90% minutes. He's 24th in guard. the country. And minute percentage. So, cool Trent guard. Uh, what's can you tell me their lineup and I'll tell you who they'll guard? Because if I'm you look trying. at their lineup for the game against Elon, I'm trying. By the way, how did Ohio State ended up shooting 45 percent from the field yesterday? Like that's amazing. <laughs> they were like they didn't get their first field goal until 13 minutes left. 
I think my laptop's going to blow up. I can see that happening, yeah. <laughs> Who did they play? Elon and Drexel. Drexel versus Elon Musk. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Looks like they're starters. This isn't going to help because they play multiple minutes. Um, Cameron Winter. So that'll be Miller, probably 6'2, 175. Okay. James Butler. Uh, that'll be Kofi because he's 6'8", 242, I guess, or Grandison. Probably Kofi, though, because of the weight. Okay. TJ Bickerstaff. That'll be Grandison, 6'9", 207. Uh, Zach Walton. That'll be Io, 6'6", 205. <laughs> and Xavier Bell. I you know, probably Miller, because if it was Mady yeah. Urich, who's 5'11", 193, it would be yeah, Frazier. So, so they have Bell starting, um, but he only played 19 minutes. Uh, Urich and Okros both played 28. So Okay, yeah. So Trent will probably be on winter no matter what, I would say, actually. Yeah. If, you got to put their best player against Trent if he's right. close to the uh, same side. Bell, in this game, Bell had 11 <clears throat> Uh, Okros had 14. Okros was their leading scorer off the bench, it looks like. How many Winter have? Winter had eight. He's probably due to have like 40 against Illinois. <laughs> He'll be like Jason Let's Preston. See what shooting was. Uh, he went three of 12 from yeah, the field. Yeah, he's two for one. He's so. two for one. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh, – we'll see. I don't know. They yeah. uh, This team lost to Pittsburgh – they lost to LaSalle or LaSalle or whatever the hell it is. They lost to Hofstra. LaSalle sounds right. James Madison, William & Mary, Charleston twice. They split a lot of games with, with I mean, their Illinois coaches. is not going to be Virginia, right? Let's not be Virginia. I wouldn't think so, but I feel like since everyone is picking them to go to the Final Four, it's a tough spot. Yeah. Every single person I've seen has them in the Final Four. Yeah. I mean, I mean honestly, you know, people – are always like, I want a one seed, but you look at it, one seeds, I mean, you're playing an eight or nine regardless. You know, you're not getting an upset coming in. Um, and then, you you know, you got to play teams like Oklahoma State that are somehow a four. But, you know, I think all the one seeds went to the Sweet 16. I think so, too. But I, the ones I'd be worried about is Illinois Michigan. Yeah. Not yeah, as I mean, much Michigan if they play LSU, though, because everyone talks about how good LSU's offense is. They're terrible defensively, which is going to play right into Michigan's hand. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, but, well, no. Let's, uh, are we going to do a prediction? Uh, I'm going to go with 89 to 69. I would go with, like, 93 to 63. 30 points. How'd that uh, Iowa prediction work out for you, by the way? I missed the mark a little bit, yeah. Uh, by the <laughs> I way, I think I was pretty close. I think I was pretty close. The Illini You're Twitter more, The Illini Twitter is uh just tweeted that the team is at number two in the AP this week. Really? Yes, yeah, so they passed well, Baylor. Jump Baylor. Huh? Baylor lost to Oklahoma State. Did you think Illinois had a chance to be the number two no. seed in the tournament? No. no, I was just making sure they'd be the number three. I just didn't know when in the Big Ten tournament, Baylor getting knocked out. Yeah, but here's the players. problem. The problem is that Baylor had two losses. Overall schedule, yeah, absolutely. They look and they look at what's happened lately. It's it's overall. I get it. And it has to be that because if it wasn't, did you you'd think, be overreacting to things. Did you think that uh, Michigan might have moved because Livers is possibly out? I guarantee Livers plays. Guarantee. Yeah, I do too. I think that Michigan was just looking They're for a in case they lost. Yeah. Look at what they did with Brooks. It looks like the, Brooks. Hold Jawan is what Brooks, I'm going to call him. Brooks hurt his foot against Michigan State. It looked like he wasn't going to play for a long time, and he came back in the next game. Yeah. yeah. They like carried him off the court. But anyway. Um, call that pulling a Jawan. The thing with Baylor is that they have wins over Illinois, <laughs> Kansas, Texas True. Tech, Texas, West Virginia, Oklahoma in State, December, Texas though. Tech, Let's Oklahoma State. For Illinois? Yeah. Yeah. 
Three All and right. two in quad one. You can't argue with that, though, you know? Right. Of course, Illinois we, uh, has the most quad ahead. one wins, but. That's right. Don't ever forget that. What is Illinois' quad one record? 12 and four. 12 and five. <clears throat> I was just shooting it off the head. Um, anyway, so you guys wanted us to do an episode. We put an episode together. I'm in Vegas. I'm going to go enjoy Vegas after we do this March Madness one. Um, but thanks for listening. I'm, I'm ending this for us. Is that all right? That was great, yeah. <laughs> do you care? No. All right. Go line out. Let's make a deep run in the tourney. We will see you guys hopefully Saturday morning. Um, I'll be back in the broadcast in the better setup, so. You are, because I don't know how to do that. All right. It's over. Uh, episode 62 <laughs> next week. Hopefully they can not lose to a 16 seed.